Hello everyone, and welcome to another XML layout tutorial. Today, we'll be going over creating dynamic content. This is a new project. I've just downloaded and imported XML layout from the Asset Store. We'll start by creating a new XML layout object with the Add New XML Layout wizard. We'll need to create both a new XML file and an XML layout controller. Now, before we continue, let's quickly set up Canvas Scaling. Select the Canvas Game object and modify the Canvas Scaler properties as necessary. I'll be using Scale with Screen Size with a reference resolution of 960 by 600 and matching width and height equally. With Canvas Scaling set up, we can start working on our layout. Select the XML Layout object and click the Open XML File in External Editor button to open Visual Studio. We'll start by creating some basic styles to be used by our layout. Firstly, we'll create a text style to handle the default appearance of text elements throughout our layout. We'll also set up the styles to be used by our table layout because we're going to use a table layout to position the elements. We'll set the cell background color to clear because by default we don't want to see the borders around each cell. And we're also going to set it up so that each cell can use its own cell padding value. Lastly, we're going to set up the row default styles so that they don't use the table row background image provided by the table layout itself. Uh, disabling this value will allow us to specify a different background image for each row. Uh, the reason why we're doing this will become apparent as we put the layout together. With the basic styles out of the way, we can start putting our user interface together. Our table layout is going to have two rows. The first row is going to be our header with some header text. And our second row will be our viewport. Let's start by setting up the basic appearance of each of these rows and cells. As usual, we're going to use styles and classes to set up the appearance of each of these elements. We're going to use the class title for the row as well as for the text. Remember that the same class name used on different elements is completely separate. Oops, I've made a minor mistake here. Uh, when I set up the style for the row and I said don't use table row background, the value here should have actually been 1 for true rather than false. My mistake. Anyway, with the styles for the title row set up, uh, let's have a look and see how it's come out. Nice. Alright, let's move on to the next part. Uh, we're now going to start working on the viewport styles. So firstly, we'll assign the class viewport to our second row, and then we'll create the styles here. And let's take a look. There we go. 
What I'd like to do next is create a scroll view to store our items that we're going to dynamically display. So we'll go back to our XML file and start work on adding a vertical scroll view. Inside our scroll view, we're going to create a vertical layout to store our items. This uh, vertical layout is going to require an ID so we can access it in code later. We'll call it container and we're going to give it a class as well so that we can set up some basic styles for it. We need to set up the content size fitter attribute so that our uh, vertical layout will be sized correctly based on the contents. And there we go, our scroll view is now in place. With the basic layout ready, we can start work on our template. The template is an XML element that we'll be using as the base for the items we'll be displaying in the list. It won't be visible in our interface, but what we will be doing is creating copies of it and then modifying them to match our items. I'm going to start by adding a comment here which shows us where our template starts and ends, just to make it clearer. As with the vertical layout, we're going to need an ID on our template so that we can access it in code later. The first customizable item in our template is going to be an image. You'll see we're using the internal ID attribute. Um, this is very similar to the ID attribute except that it doesn't have to be unique within your XML layout. It is used uh, when you want to access a element that is a child of another element. So in this case, the internal ID of our image here will be referenced when we open our item template in the code. This should become clearer later on. And that's the basic layout of the template. Let's now create some styles for it. Oh yes, I've accidentally used the wrong class name here on the table layout. This may be the item template, but the class itself is for all items. So the class should be item rather than item template. 
Okay, let's take a quick look. And there you can see we have our item template with an image, a name, and some text. All of these will be replaced uh, when we create copies of this later on. The next step is to hide this item template because we don't want it visible in our interface. Uh, this is easily accomplished by setting the active attribute to false. And there we go, it's now hidden. With the basics in place, we can now move on to the controller. We'll start by defining a structure to store the data we want to display. We'll call it myItemInfo. This simple class will contain three variables which will store the name, the image, and the text. We're also going to create a simple constructor to make it a little bit easier to create instances of it. And there we go, that's the my item info class. Uh, this class is just for convenience, you can store your data however you like. Now we need to create a list of my item info objects to display in our interface. In a real world scenario, you'd most likely pull this data from somewhere else, but for the purposes of this example, we'll just populate it here. I'm just selecting these images at random. And I've actually run out of images, so I'm just going to get rid of the last two there. Uh, there we go, that's our complete item collection and we're now ready to start work on displaying these elements. In order to uh, display these elements, we're going to need references to both the container and the template. For this example, we're going to use the relatively new feature called an XML element reference. Now, before you could access elements by using the xmllayout.getElementById method. Uh, this is still present and it's still perfectly acceptable to use. However, the XML element reference method may be more convenient for you. We start by creating two XML element reference objects. One for our item container and a second for our item template. Next, we need a method to populate these values. Unfortunately, they cannot be populated uh, in the initialization phase as they require a item reference. Lastly, we need to call populate XML references if necessary. You can do this in awake or uh, start. Sometimes it may be better to do it elsewhere. Uh, for the purpose of this example, I'm going to call it in layout rebuild if the item container and item template haven't been populated yet. So we'll just go if item container is null or 
item template is null populate XML references. Uh, so this should only be called once, uh, but calling it here ensures that it is always populated uh, whenever we execute our layout rebuilt code. Remember from our previous tutorials that layout rebuilt is called whenever the XML layout is rebuilt for any reason. So what we're going to do here is we're going to iterate through our item collection and create elements for each of them. To start with, we need to instantiate our new item using gameobjects.instantiate. We're passing it the item template element as a basis. We need to use the initialize method in order to make sure that our XML element is all set up correctly. So it has three arguments, XML layout, so we'll pass it this XML layout, a rec transform, which will just pass it its own rec transform, and a tag handler, which in this case uh, we can conveniently find with the item tag handler as well. Next, we need to add the item to our item container. And lastly here, before we can uh, actually see our elements, we need to make them active because the template is inactive. So we're going to say item.setAttribute active to true. And then we're going to apply the attributes to it. And let's have a look. We should see several items that we can scroll through. There we go. The next step will be to load the data from our my info, item info class and override the template values. This is fairly simple. We're going to use the internal IDs to access each of those elements. So we go name equals item dot get element by internal ID and we're going to pass it the internal ID name. Now we go name dot set attribute text to the item info dot name value and then we go name.apply attributes. If you have a look now, you'll see that in play mode, our names have been replaced with the item info values. Uh, if you'd like this to work properly in edit mode as well, you can simply go to your controller and add the execute in edit mode annotation to the class. And there we go. Um, from here, let's do the same for our image and uh, item text uh, values. And let's take a look. Uh, sometimes it might be necessary to click the force rebuild now button after making changes to the code just to ensure that everything is up to date. And if we take a look at this in play mode, you'll see that all of our items have now been populated correctly. And that's it for this tutorial today. I hope it's been helpful to you. Uh, you can get XML layout on the Asset Store, the link is in the description below. Cheers.